Hello and welcome to Introduction to Microbiology. My learning goals for you include you will be able to define a microbe, you will understand the differences among archaeal, bacterial, and eukaryotic microbes, you'll appreciate that microbes are everywhere and outnumber all other living things. You'll know why microbes are essential for life, and you'll appreciate how microbes shape the earth. Let's begin with a definition of a microbe. The word microbe has micro in it, and that comes from microscope. And that's because small, these are small organisms visible only under the microscope. The study of microbes is called microbiology. There are a number of different kinds of microbes that we're going to be talking about, and the first group is called the bacteria. Here is an electron micrograph, a high magnification image of a common bacteria that's in your intestine, E. coli. You can see that they're rod-shaped, they're individual cells, and they have a number of properties that we're going to be discussing. This is magnified about 100,000 times. Bacteria have a number of properties that distinguish them from the cells that are in you and I. For example, they don't have nuclei, as do our cells, and they don't have membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria or chloroplasts, which are found in plants. There are a lot of different shapes of bacteria. They include rods, spheres, and spirals, and a few others. There are many, many bacteria on Earth. Our estimate is about 5 times 10 to the 30th. That's a huge number, actually bigger than we can really comprehend. You may be used to about a billion, which is a giga of something. Well, 10 to the 30th is a lot more than that. The bacteria can be found in every environment on Earth. Wherever you look, whether it be in soil, in the oceans, in rocks even, you can find bacteria. Another group of microbes that I'd like to tell you about are the archaea. When the archaea were first discovered, they looked like bacteria. They can occur as spheres or rods, and so they Scientists thought these must be bacteria, so they were classified along with them. These archaea lack nuclei, and they also lack membrane-bound organelles like mitochondria and chloroplasts, and so it was thought these must be bacteria. But it turned out that we were wrong. The archaea are evolutionarily closer to eukaryotes. The cells within us, between it, in you and I, these are eukaryotic cells. Archaea resemble them more than they resemble bacteria. Archaea are often found in extreme environments, and we like to call them extremophiles because they love those extreme environments. And here's one of them. This is a hot spring in Yellowstone National Park in the U.S. where the waters are over 90 degrees centigrade. Some of the archaea love to grow in these environments. It's truly amazing. One of the archaea that grows in such extreme environments is called Pyrococcus furiosus. And I love this particular archaea. You can see it's an oval-shaped cell with lots of what we call flagella at one end, and this is how these cells move around. But they're not always present in just extreme environments. Some of the archaea live more normally, like we do. You can find them in soils, you can find them in oceans, you can find them in other wet areas like marshlands, and they're also in us, in you and I. We contain archaea. You can find them in your colon, your large intestine, they're in your mouth, and they're also found on your skin. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.